Hey guys, what's up? Toba Loco here. Welcome back to the 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil game. And today we are doing a run with Georgia. Of course, I had to play as Georgia after their historic qualification to Euro 2024. I know you might be thinking it's a bit weird doing it on a World Cup game rather than a Euro game. But I figured that the 2014 World Cup, you know... Kind of the most updated version that we have of these tournament games. Well, I have until obviously the new Euro DLC comes out on EA Sports FC. So, um, yeah, we're going to be doing Georgia on what the World Cup game today. They're ranked 97th in the world at the time of 2014. And... They're sort of a mid-tier side. Let's go and find out our groups right now. So obviously we're on a custom World Cup because that randomizes everything. And um, of course we are going to shuffle our groups just once. Just to see where Georgia will land. So in 3, 2, 1, boom. And we are in a group with... Uh, wow, okay. That's pretty decent. Bulgaria, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Faroe Islands, Iceland... And Lithuania. We managed to avoid all the bigger sides in Europe, which is amazing. I'd say the biggest side in this group is probably Bosnia. 2014 Bosnia was a very good version of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And um, I would say the second best is probably either Iceland or Bulgaria, really. I mean, Lithuania are on par with us, really. And the Faroe Islands are the minnow. So it will be an interesting group to navigate with Georgia here. So this first video is just basically friendly matches and to see if Georgia can compete with some of these teams that we got in the friendly matches. So our first match is going to be against Austria. Before we start though, let's have a look and see what the Georgian squad was like back in in 2014. So the only Georgian player I really have heard of before in uh, sort of their entire footballing history is... Um, Oh, let me try and get this right. Kizaniskili? Kivaniskili? Something like that. I think he's a defender. That's the only one I've ever heard of. Um, here, though, we've got a couple of players that are rated like 74, 72. So, Akashia, 74 rated. We have um, And and that's it, or however you say it. Well, there's a Kizaniskili there. Is that the one I'm talking about? I'm fairly sure it is, right? I mean, he's rated 73. So... Yeah, maybe. But yeah, going back to my original point, there's another Georgian, obviously, that these days um, is a very good player. Uh, play for Napoli. I can't remember his name. No, <laughs> I really can't remember his name. But um, he well, he is a very good player. So our first friendly game is going to be against Austria. Let's see how we can fare against an opponent that is slightly better than us. Of course, their three-star team as well. But they do have better sort of talent around the field. Of course, David Alaba um, is the main one that stands out to me. And Anatovic as well. So we've got to watch out in this match. But I'm hoping that Georgia can impress me in this first match. Georgia qualifying in dramatic fashion against Greece on penalties to make it to Euro 2024 is just amazing for them and the tournament as well. Someone brought up a stat saying that in most of the Euros we've had, um, there's always been a debutant nation and that's pretty cool. I think that Georgia, the group they're in in real life, it's quite a difficult group, but don't write them off, you know. Um, I don't expect them to get any wins, per perhaps, but... Um, don't write them off for scoring goals. Remember Macedonia in 20, Euro 2020. Um, you know, they performed pretty okay for a debutant nation. Austria have a free kick on the edge of the box. This could be a goal if we don't stop this free kick from Ivan Schitz. And here we go. Just over the bar. That's probably, well, it's only the second chance of the game from Austria. Georgia have had zero. So, a bit concerning that we haven't been able to break through the defence yet. So, half-time and a bit of a boring game, really, from Georgia's point of view. Austria have had a couple of shots, but nothing too special. Come on. Oh, that was kind of... Hang on. There's a penalty. I was about to say it was kind of close, but then there was a foul, a very late foul in the box, and Austria have a penalty. Will they convert this? Ivan Schitz on the penalty duty. Ivan Schitz to take. 
And, oh, that was so cheeky. I thought he was going to blast it because I looked at the bar and I was like, yeah, he's going to put full power on it. And he completely fooled me. And Austria are now winning by one goal to nil thanks to the penalty. We haven't really done an awful lot, though. I've struggled very much with Georgia to get forward. Um, I don't know why, but maybe it's just Austria's setup or Georgia's setup. Maybe I need to change the formation. But this is what the friendly matches are for, to find out who is good, who is bad, what kind of formation works, what one doesn't. A very unimpressive game from both sides. A penalty had to sort of decide it. But um, Austria win and we experience our first loss with Georgia. So a couple of changes might be needed and also um, a formation change probably to make the team a little bit more attacking. Our next match of our friendlies is going to be against Spain away from home at the Bernabeu. It's looking pretty good even for 2014. It looks really, really nice. You've got the Georgians there at the back. And then, of course, the rest of the stadium is all Spanish. So let's see if we can try and bounce back from that. That loss against Austria, it wasn't a bad loss, but it was just a dull game. Georgia didn't really have that much going for them. I've made a lot of changes to the lineup. I found some higher rated players in the uh, reserves and the bench. So, yeah, hopefully they can help us. And, of course, I've changed the formation. So, hopefully that will help as well. Out to you. Back out to you. And Georgia gets stopped there. Spain are just going to be a bit too big for us, aren't they, in this match. we just got to get lucky if we can. And, oh, almost. Hold on. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> what happened there? Kania scored to make it 1-0 to Georgia. And Spain are 1-0 down thanks to a calamity of errors in the box. And Georgia, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> PK. It was PK. He tried to header it and then... Um, Kenny uh, somehow outheaded him on the second attempt and we headed it in. Fantastic from Georgia, 1-0. Spain got cut out there. I think we just need to be frustrating now. Just play it around and be super frustrating against Spain. Um, it's a bit weird how Spain are playing their first team against me. I would have thought they would have probably played some... You know, backup players and substitutes. But it seems like they've got their whole first team out for a friendly. I mean, for Georgia, it's not that unusual because we're the smaller team. But Spain probably should have maybe went with some, you know, lesser known players, perhaps. But, hey, it's fine. If I can beat the first team of Spain, and that's, that's all good. Cross that one in. And, oh my god, it's Ananatse. With the second goal, a header that goes straight in, and that's 2 0 to Georgia. What's happening? What's happening to Spain here? They're 2 0 down, and you know, Georgia against Austria, we were terrible in that match attacking wise, and now Spain are terrible defensively against us. Into the box, out to you, and that's free. What are Spain doing? It's 3 0. I swear I haven't like lowered the difficulty or anything like that. This is 3-0 against Spain. This is insane because, look, their defending was atrocious. They just stood off of me. And that is 3-0 before half-time. The biggest shock in not only Spain's history, but Georgia's history as well. Half-time here and Georgia are leading 3-0 in this friendly match against Spain. Incredible start from the Georgians in this match away from home and a complete contrast to what happened against Austria. We were toothless against Austria and yet here we've shown that we can actually attack especially a bigger side like Spain. We've had six shots. Spain have only had three. Oh, what a ball. Go on. Oh, good save. And again, that could have been four. Georgia have shown that they can sort of wrestle with the big boys in Europe it's a ball into the middle and it hits the post come on clear it oh thank you goalkeeper it's gonna be a corner in the 90th minute let's get the goalkeeper um, an assist maybe let's try that you know it's a friendly game who cares right crossed in header oh almost and um, once Casillas boots this away it will be game over and a very embarrassing result here for Spain. So that is going to be it. Spain have been beaten here by Georgia and not just 
like normally beaten, well beaten. 3 0 in the first half. One goal was down to an error, the rest of them were just good goals from Georgia. And, um,. Yeah, just weird how Georgia pulled this out the bag against Spain, you know, a giant in Europe, and, um, you know, failed so miserably against Austria. So we have another friendly against Brazil this time, and, um, well, the form has kind of repaired itself a little bit. Um, the defence is still down, but the attacking is up, which is great. Hopefully we can get the same result as we did with Spain but this time against Brazil um, don't know don't really know to be honest I'll be happy with a draw the great thing about this formation I've got with Georgia is that um, we're just sort of a lot more pressing and that's what we did against Spain that's what we showed against them Danny Alves to put this one into the box it's headed and um, nothing too difficult for the goalkeeper there Brazil's first attempt very very weak and that's a through ball, and we're literally going all the way through. Come on, look at this. Is there a chance? I mean, we still got it. Still got it. Ah, oh, come on. I mean, we still got it here on the edge of the box. And the shot is a weak one. I think if we're beating Spain and potentially beat Brazil or draw against them, the group that we have will not be too much of an issue but you never know with these friendly matches it could be sort of like a red herring sort of situation where um you know we perform so well in the friendlies and then in the qualifiers the other teams just absolutely just turn up and you know beat me these over the top balls by georgia are actually really good i don't know how they're doing it but oh my god go on oh <laughs> that would have been a hell of a strike before half time Julia Cesar did pounce on it, but um, yeah, what a strike. Brazil, pushing forward, Hulk. Okay, he's got past me. Crossed in, header, and that's gone in. Just before half-time, Jonas has scored to make it 1-0 to Brazil. And, um, well, goalkeeper probably should have got it, but it's Brazil. So, you know, I'm glad that Brazil have actually tried in this match compared to Spain in the last match. You know, decent goal by Brazil felt like my keeper probably should have got it or maybe my defenders could have tried to get it a bit more but it is Brazil and it is Jonas so you know I'll let him off 1-0 to Brazil go on this is a chance Kenny has found himself in behind for a little gap and it's saved by Cesar great save oh, that's a great ball by Brazil and just wide from Brazil there oh could have been two that's a shot, and oh, I never really see the computer try a long shot, um, well, too many times on FIFA games against me. It's a good ball. Can we do anything? Oh, off the post. It's just not been George's day. We've hit the bar and the post, and that's really unfortunate, but we've given it a really good go. I think once the goalkeeper boots this one away, it will be game over. Like I said, competitive, very good. You know, I'm not mad about that at all. Um, they can hang their heads high with that result. Not a bad result at all. So our last international friendly match before our qualifying stage is going to be against Wales away from home. So that's perfect really. Again, another team that is sort of the same rating as Georgia. Of course, we got to try and contain the likes of Gareth Bale and um, Robson uh, Carnu as well and um, Aaron Ramsey, <laughs> Allen, you know, Joe Allen, all those players. So that'll be a fun match to do for the end of this video. So here we go then, away from home against Wales. And for some reason, the stadium looks really odd. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, I don't know. Wales, I thought that they would have a more like a dome stadium, like the, obviously the Cardiff Stadium or Millennium Stadium, as it's called, I think. Um, I would have thought they'd have this in the game, but clearly not. Wales have been quite tough in these first 25 minutes, not letting me through too much. Um, hopefully that will change. Here comes the left back for Georgia and it just bounces wide. I love those types of shots where they almost catch out the keeper you know I love the physics of that sort of stuff way better than um, most of the FIFAs that you get around this sort of time oh that's good dribbling 
And that's a great save by my hero in there. Probably should have put that towards the bottom corner maybe. But the dribbling there was really nice to get round um, Williams in defence. Half time and it is nil nil. I love how on the Welsh flags in the background most of them say Gareth Bell. Like Bale's name. Like most of them you can see there say Bale. Instead of Wales it's Bale. I mean I guess that makes sense you know for Wales at the time. I'm trying to get into this game but Wales have been so good at retrieving the ball away from me. Been a tiny bit frustrating on my part but you know it's the last for any match. I'll take a draw if I have to. It's crossed in, it's headed, and off the post by Wales, and it's gone in. And Robson Carnu has scored to make it 1-0 to Wales. See, this is what I don't understand about Georgia. We're struggling here against Wales, but then we dispatched of Spain so easily. It's, it's like I said, it's a weird mixed bag, and I think we're going to experience that in the group for qualifying when we start it in the next video. Go for the shot and it's saved again by our goalkeeper. We're not going to get anything out of this match. Wales have been just too good um, in the second half. The first half we were, you know, shooting a lot against them. But we just couldn't find a way through. And now Wales have the 1-0. Uh, I think it's going to end like that. And that is going to be it, I'm afraid. We lost 1-0 against Wales. And again, like I said earlier, it just makes the Spain result so weird. I think it was just a freak result, to be fair. But we've lost 1-0 against Wales. We've lost 1-0 against Austria. We lost 1-0 against Brazil. So when Georgia lose, it's only by a goal at the moment anyway. And when Georgia win, they play really well. So... Again, a team that is good on its day and then very, very sort of unconvincing on another day. Very inconsistent. All right, so most of the other regions have advanced so far that, um, you know, most of their qualifying is almost done because Europe starts so late. So, um, yeah, we'll have a look at these results. So, any uh, noteworthy, outstanding results in the African region? Any shocks? I'm looking through it, and I'm not seeing too many shocks at the moment. Um, Chad beating Madagascar could be considered as a shock, because Chad are not the best team, really. They're one of the worst teams in Africa, really. So, that's one of them. Um, but I'm not seeing any other shocks there. What about in round two? I mean, round two has only just really started. And um, as you can see, most of the usual suspects are doing well. Like Cameroon and uh, Senegal, Tunisia, Egypt, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, all doing very well. Group G looks very interesting in this African region. With um, Eritrea and Somalia in the same group. So... Yeah, that's kind of weird that Eritrea got through. How did Eritrea get through? Um, oh, they just randomly got through. Not even through this kind of playoff. They actually, because I randomised it at the start, they put Eritrea basically in this uh, round two before it even started. So in AFC, we have a uh, few results here from the first round. So again, uh, I'm not seeing too many shocks it all looks very sort of reasonable. I don't know. I can't really see if uh, Taiwan or my Malaysia actually won. It looks like Malaysia won on aggregate, but I'm not too sure. We'll have to see in the next round. Um, it was it was Malaysia. Okay. Any shocks in round two of Asia qualifying? Um, so we got Indonesia beating Vietnam 3-2. Looks pretty normal to me. I mean, there's some huge results here. You know, China beating Tajikistan 7-2. Kuwait beating Bangladesh 7-0. Um, we got another 7-1 against Mongolia for Jordan. So, uh, as you can expect, it's basically a very, very basic AFC qualifying. No minnows, really, to speak of. It's literally the same... Uh, sort of usual suspects as you would expect. Okay, moving on to OFC. What's happening here? So, in round one, it looked like that. So, Papua New Guinea advanced. 
And then in round two, it was um, Tahiti and Papua New Guinea and New Zealand and the Solomon Islands. So that would mean that in round three, which it looks like this, it would be Tahiti, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. The comma bowl looks like this. So Argentina are top, Uruguay just behind them, as are Chile, Paraguay and Colombia as well. It's all very close and in its early stages in comma bowl. So we'll return to that in a later time in CONCACAF then let's have a look and see some of these results so um, again I'm not really seeing any huge surprises maybe Montserrat winning 5-2 against Belize maybe I'm not too sure um, but the other results are pretty basic in round two it looked like this so um, Suriname and Dominican Republic went through in Group A. Group B, Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana went through in Group B, I think. And um, I think, anyway, because some teams don't go through. I think someone explained it to me in my last uh, CONCACAF qualifying um, that I did on this game. That some of the teams don't actually go through. Um, because I, you know, randomize it and stuff at the start. So we'll see. So it's actually, I'm, I'm wrong, actually. I think it's all the teams that finish top of this group. It's not the second place teams. It's the teams that finish top because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, when you randomize it, um, it does that. So, um, yeah, moving on. <laughs> it's uh, Group A, uh, Jamaica leading that one at the moment. But it's all still early days. Costa Rica in Group B um, running away with that one at the moment alongside Honduras. And in Group C we have a very close situation between Mexico, Panama and Canada. So really at the moment no minnows are sort of going through at the moment. The last sort of beacon of hope for any minnows going through is... Uh, Europe at the moment so yeah or maybe Africa as well maybe I don't know but anyway that has been your first part with Georgia I really hope that you guys enjoyed this first part with Georgia and the friendly matches tune in next time where Georgia will be actually playing for qualification if you did enjoy this first part with Georgia then give it a like and subscribe keep it loco as always and I'll see you again for the next video